This should be the last seminar you go to in your life. You need to just go take action. Here's the thing, success is a very simple process, right? You don't have to, to me, like what, what, how I learn new things is through experiences. You know, I take, I take what happens and I learn from those experiences. And you know, I, I, I dropped out of college, right? College wasn't for me, I couldn't handle it. I made all A's and B's in high school. And then I got to college, I fell into history class, and I said, college is not for me. So I went and got my real estate license, it's one class to do that, versus 10 years to be a doctor or lawyer. Um, you know, when I was 20, I got in real estate, I made a bill before I was 23 and lost it all, right? During that period I lost it all, I read 100 books. Okay, I read 100 books during that time. So, like, when, when I look back through the, the process, the, the, the different stages of my life, that, that time when I read those hundred books, I was so, I didn't really read that much before that either, right? A little bit here and there, but I was so curious and fascinated with and hungry and thirsty for trying to figure out why I lost everything. You know, why are some people still succeeding? And here I am, a hardworking, honest person, you know, lost every little thing I had. Went bankrupt, sleeping on friends' couches, sleeping in my car, uh, you know, roofed houses, worked in an oil rig all that stuff. Um, it took me having to go through all that to really learn how to really build a business, a solid business that'll make it through anything. And uh, so yeah, I went through my stage of reading a lot and, and, and all that, but at this point, look guys, I never went to seminars and stuff. I tell people that, <laughs> that I go and speak to, I'm like, look, this should be the last seminar you go to in your life. You need to just go take action. So many people sit around and watch videos and listen to podcasts and go to seminars and read books and do all these things, they never take any action. They have all these, all these action items in their mind that they could go execute on, but they never do it. What do they do instead? Read another book, listen to another podcast, go to another seminar. When are you gonna actually take action? So I'm kind of all the way the other way with it. I learned everything that I felt like I needed to do to get where I wanted to go. Now it's just a matter of, am I gonna do it? And so for me, I just can't sit down and read a book. I would rather answer you know, 150 DMs or, you know, brainstorm about my next book or what I want to share or, you know, make some phone calls or something of that nature, something I feel like is more productive. Because like I say, guys, at the end of the day, <laughs> there's no secrets out there, man. This stuff is just, it's real thing. Winners understand how boring the process is. Once you do something, you get excited, you do it for three or four months. At that point, you either get bored with it and quit or you keep going and succeed at really high levels because because that it's the same stuff every day. <laughs> you do the same stuff day in and day out. It, it can be a very boring process. And winners are okay with the boring lifestyle to get where they want to be. Losers can't stomach how boring it is or how many L's you have to take to get there. Well, what I was gonna say is very interesting, and that is this: I think that there's a lot of pent up demand now, right? for in-person stuff. We're doing so much virtual things now and it's great. We're replacing it, business goes on, life goes on. But I'm telling you right now, when the pandemic happened, I had 19 events, 19 cities I was going to to speak at events that got canceled. When we open back up and it's safe to do events, we're gonna have to, we're gonna have to rent bigger venues because the pent up demand of people that want to be in the same room with high energy people and have that, have, be able to shake hands with, and meet people and talk to people. It's a whole different energy, man. I mean, this is great, but I'll be honest with you, man. I would love to actually be face to face with you doing this interview. You know what I mean? If I had my choice, you know what I'm saying? I feel like we could have fed off each other a lot different, you know, in, in, in a different way, not necessarily better. But man, I'm telling you, when this thing, I, I believe 2021 is going to be the, one of the best years, the, probably the best year we've ever seen for real estate, for personal branding, for, for, it, for everything. I think it's going to be one of, the, one of the, because we have so much pent up demand. People have just been locked in their houses this whole time. It's been such a crazy year from top to bottom. <laughs> I just think that we're just going to come out of this thing. Everybody's going to be guns blazing. And it hit me and I was like, okay, the first part of my career, I was only focused on transactions and money. And that's what took me out because 
My clients weren't really looking to make a relationship with me either because during that time it was so crazy. They were selling and making 100000 and then running for the hills. They didn't really want to talk to me ever again either. So it was, it was kind of both sides, but I wasn't making zero effort to build a personal brand, to continue those conversations and relationships, to ask what I could do to help them moving forward. You know, it was kind of like a wham down make our money, go do it again with somebody else, and just do that over and over and over again, So the market crashed, and then it was like, I have no clients. <laughs> and the market crashed, everybody went away, and now what do I do? Now, if I would've if I would have known what I know now, I could've easily just picked up the phone, called every property owner in the area, and said, hey, the market's down 20% today, what, is there anything I could do to help you? You wanna buy? There's only three things the owner's gonna do during a the crash. They're gonna buy, because it's low, they're gonna sell because they're in trouble, or they're just gonna hold. There's only three options. They're gonna buy, they're gonna buy something because it's really cheap out there, they have the ability, they're gonna hold because they just wanna ride it out and see what happens, or they're gonna sell because they're in trouble. Either way it goes, is there an agent you're gonna work with on that? I would love to work with you, let's go. You know what I mean? And you do that over and over and over again through a crash, you will become one of the most wealthiest real estate agents in your area through one of the darkest times that you've ever seen. A lead is a human being in your market, okay? It's, it's, and to be, to be frank with you, the highest quality is one that owns the exact property you wanna sell. So my strategy is you can't call all those owners ever in your life. So you have unlimited business. Right, and our business is not to do deals, but to see what we can do to help people make friends with these property owners. Whatever agent has the most friends with property owners in the area owns the market. There's no, for me, market share is not how many transactions, closings, listings you have, right, compared to the rest of the market. It's how many relationships, real relationships with property owners. Whoever has the most of those owns the market.